It took seven minutes for our words to reach the giant spacecraft, but this time delay has been edited from this recording. This is going to take a little bit of explaining to do, but you are not going to want to miss this. I honestly believe that nothing in this world could disprove the lunar landings any more than what I'm about to tell you, other than an admission from the government of fraud, and that is going to come eventually. What we're going to do here is go through a little bit painstakingly, give all the advantages to NASA as usual, and watch what happens here. You're gonna see the impossibility, and I mean 100% impossibility that we went to the moon. Now this time you get to see me show how I do my editing here because we're going to uh, do a little something here. We got the space shuttle. Now remember the space shuttle was somewhere between, what, 200 and 400 miles away. And uh, what we're gonna do is, many of you are familiar with the delays that we have with the space shuttle. Uh, a person will talk, there's a delay, and then the, in fact, sometimes they may even make a big deal of it. Don't forget, wait for them to finish because of the delay, and things like that. They'll warn people that are asking astronauts questions. Um, now, we're dealing with 21st century technology. Again, a distance of only two to 400 miles. Let's give it the, the max, 400 miles. And let's see what, um, what the delay is between the person speaking and his response. Now, when you see this play, you will hear it. Uh, this will, this is her answer. In fact, um, I don't want to turn that up because I don't want to blast your ears. But uh, I've started the timer. I've got a timer that starts here. As you can see, it goes up as he's ready to respond. So this person here is on Earth some woman asking a question and then as soon as he's done or she's done asking the question he will respond and we're going to time how long it takes for the delay now there's a little bit of a blip here i don't know if he can make it out uh let me see if i can edit the audio let me move this up a little bit uh the sound might be a little weird here a little loud maybe uh, i don't know but see this little blip right here this indicates where he turns the microphone on. This is where he is finally, he's done hearing the question. We're gonna assume he immediately knows what to say and turns the microphone on to respond. So let's go ahead and listen to it once through here. The physical challenges or the mental challenges, what have you found harder to cope with? Do you know, our... now he turned the microphone on at 3.7 seconds. I advise a lot of you guys when we're doing this timing stuff to go back and watch it on YouTube at one quarter speed. So you can see there's no cheating going on. I'm, we're going to go through this one more time here. Three, I'm going to try to stop it as close as I can to 3.7 seconds. It's this little bleep right here. In fact, 
what I can do is this, and now it will only play during this time period here. Physical challenges. Or Watch up here. Challenges. What have you found harder to cope with? Okay, now I'm going to let it go a little bit beyond that this time so you can tell that's the microphone talking, uh, turning on. 3.7 seconds. Now, I might give him even a little bit more here. Let's go right to the end of her voice. See how many seconds it is. In fact, we'll know here in a second. Physical challenges or the mental challenges, what have you found harder to cope with? Do you know... So, now the delay, at the very giving them everything, 3.9 seconds. So, 3.9 seconds. Now, let me explain one other thing that's going to be very important here. Uh, at, uh, you're going to see shortly in a diagram, when she is talking, we're hearing that from Earth. So, there should be no delay for us, even though, if, go watch Sky News or uh, the BBC News uh, replays of the 2016 election and whenever they're speaking to a correspondent from New York over to London, there's a couple second delay. This is 21st century technology and we have delays from New York to London. Anyway, I wanted to make that point first. Are you ready for the event? Station, I am ready for the event. Sky News London, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Playing games, but perhaps it is the view that he'll remember. Hello, this is Sky News Sound calling for a voice check. Well, there we can see Tim Peake on the big Sky News. And Sky News Sound, this is Tim Peake on the International Space Station, Hello. loud and clear. This is Sky News London. How do you hear me? Hello, Sky Let's News see, in London, and uh, hello to uh, everybody at the National Space Centre, Leicester. I hear you loud and clear. Ah. Fantastic, Tim. It's great to join you. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, thanks for giving Sky News your first live broadcast interview. We're absolutely delighted to speak to you. We've got a load of people here in the studio. We've got our science correspondent, Thomas Moore. We've also got three space engineering students. But our first question, and I'm sure you'll be thrilled, uh, given part of the, the aim of your mission is to engage children, is from some children. Uh, it's from Neve, who's seven, and Matthew, who's nine. And they would like to know, what moment would you describe as, as being out of this world since you've been in space? You're just showing off with that microphone, aren't you? Uh, hi, yeah, that are uh, great questions. What's out of this world? You know, the whole experience has been out of this world from the moment um, I first saw planet Earth from my Soyuz window just after we'd been inserted into orbit. Um, but I have to say, every time I go to the cupola and look out, uh, that's the most out of this out of this world moment. It's always different, whether it's a moon setting or a sunrise or uh, crossing over and, uh, you know, uh, over the South America, for example, the magnificent views, that's definitely out of this world. The views, the views of, of the Earth from space. Uh, Thomas Moore has got another question for you, Thomas. Tim, it's uh, another question from the audience. Uh, being British, uh, we're obsessed with the weather, weather, so this question is from Peter Stewart Hunt. Uh, I know it doesn't rain in space, but do you get changeable weather? You do get space weather, don't you, Tim? Well, that's a very good question. Yeah, we do get space weather. We pass through space weather. For example, the aurora, um, which uh, can be extremely beautiful and uh, amazingly bright at times. Actually, inside the space station, we maintain a pretty constant atmosphere. It's about the same pressure as Earth atmosphere and uh, about 21 degrees Celsius and a fairly steady humidity, humidity as well. Tim, uh, 
uh, it's Jane again. I mean, you, you knew what you were getting into. You talked to all the astronauts. You did a lot of preparation. You knew what you were going to miss, the kind of things we'd all miss, our family, our friends, the routine. But is there anything up there that, that you've missed that you weren't expecting to miss? Do you know, that's something that... Uh I've thought about recently and it's it is the fresh air of course and being outdoors but it's also the color green and it was Scott Kelly who prompted me to think about that because as soon as he got down to planet earth after his one year stay aboard the space station he posted a, a lovely photograph with lots of green in it and said we don't have the color green on the space station and that's very true so um, definitely the fresh air outdoors and, and the color green are things I'm looking forward to seeing again. And given that it's the greenery, it's, it's, the, it's the fresh air and space that you're missing, what do you think has been harder? Has it been the, the physical challenges or the mental challenges? What have you found harder to cope with? Do you know, our, our training is so good that it really prepares you for everything um, that you might encounter on board the space station.